What's up everyone, it's Prometheus, and today I'm going to freeze some milk. Stop it, get some help. And I know this doesn't sound all that appealing and I was pretty skeptical in the beginning, but I found this article by a gentleman named Ben Putt. Now Ben Putt has competed in four World Barista Championships and his last one was in 2017 and he did this process with his milk called freeze distillation or fractional freezing. He goes over how to do it in this article and I'm going to go over it step by step and I'm going to just give it a try and see what it's like. He mentions that it really brings out a lot of the balance in milk and helps you really create just a better milk beverage and in the pursuit of all things better coffee and obviously the perfect cappuccino is always on my mind, I wanted to give it a shot. So first up I'm going to pick a container for the freezer and this growler is a perfect option. I'm going to fill it about two thirds of the way up with milk. Remember when you do this you're going to lose about half of that milk level. So you want to put enough in so you can get enough out. So what I'm going to do is fill it about two thirds of the way up and the reason I did that is I want to give it some space to expand if I fill this thing all the way up and the milk freezes, expands, and then shatters, I'm going to have a bad time. So I'm going to avoid that altogether. And let's pop it in the freezer and I'm going to leave it in there for a day just to be sure I have a nice solid mass. 24 hours later. And would you look at that? It's frozen milk. And who would have thought? Milk turns yellow when you freeze it. So we're all learning new things along the way. So the next step in this whole process is we're going to thaw out the frozen milk. I'm going to flip it upside down and basically let it thaw into this V60. And what happens as this frozen milk thaws is the things that have a lower melting point thaw first, obviously. So what you have coming out of the milk right now is highly concentrated sugars, fats, and proteins. And the rest of the more water content is still gonna be a frozen chunk of ice, and at the end, you're gonna have kind of a gray chunk of ice. But in the V60, you're gonna have this delicious, creamy, highly concentrated distilled milk. Now this whole process took a few hours on the counter. I tried to thaw it out in the fridge to begin with, but it just didn't really melt much at all. And I figured it wouldn't hurt too bad as long as I kept an eye on it. If you did this overnight, probably not ideal to leave your milk out in that temperature for too long, but otherwise I think you're fine. So after all that, all that time in the freezer, all that time thawing, what we're left with is about a cup and a half of distilled milk. And I'm just really curious to try this on its own, so I'm gonna compare this right now to some whole milk. So first up, let's grab just a bit of the whole milk that we poured into the jug and try it on its own before we compare it to the distilled milk. You can see a lot just by giving it a quick spin. You can see the film on the glass is quite a bit thinner than you'd expect and you know the water content is just a little bit higher than obviously the distilled milk is. So first thing you notice, thin film on the glass like I said, it's mildly sweet, has a smooth mouthfeel and little to no aftertaste. So now let's try out the distilled milk. This one right off the bat just looks different and the way it swirls obviously it's heavier, it creates a thicker film on the glass and the color is just a little more of an off-white. It seems almost like more cream based than actually just whole milk. But let's give it a taste and see where it stands. Now like I mentioned, it leaves a thicker film on the glass, it has a much higher level of sweetness, it almost reminds me of a vanilla ice cream starter or melted vanilla ice cream. It has a very velvety mouthfeel that kind of sticks around for a while, and the aftertaste reminds me of raw milk where it's got a little bit more of that like farm to table sort of taste as opposed to a highly processed sort of taste. But now it's time to taste it in the espresso. And the, one of the things that Ben Put mentioned in the article was he liked to split it one to one with regular whole milk, but I want to see what it tastes like all with distilled milk and then one to one whole milk and distilled milk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two different cups, each of which has five ounces of milk, one's half and half, and one is full distilled milk. Now of course in the pursuit of the perfect cappuccino, obviously we're talking a lot about milk, but we want to make sure we're doing a lot of the same good processes we do with our shots. So make sure you're making your espresso just as good as you normally would. Pay attention to all the little factors and let's not let the shot affect the overall quality. So I'm gonna pull some great shots and make some cappuccinos. First up, I'm making the cappuccino that is using all distilled milk. 
I'm going to be very careful putting this in the pitcher and making sure not to waste a drop because that took a lot of time to get that milk done and I don't have a lot of it. And I'm gonna steam it up. It steams just the same as normal whole milk. If you have questions on milk steaming, I'll put a link to my milk steaming tutorial up above right now. But now that we have this steamed up, let's taste it. Similar to steaming, it doesn't really pour any differently than regular whole milk does. And that's really not surprising. The fat content is still relatively high and it just does nice work. So no complaints there on the latte art front or the foam level. On the taste side, it's obviously very sweet. It's a lot denser and heavier. It can pull some of the attention away from your espresso. So if you're using a really nice espresso, you know, be warned that it could definitely take away from that overall. But generally it was a really good cappuccino, but there was definitely a lack of balance there between the sweetness and the coffee. Next, let's talk about the one-to-one -one ratio cappuccino. So like Ben was saying, he split these one-to-one -one because he found it created a better balance overall. So let's see what that's like. I mix these two and you can see right away there's more bubbles in it. It steams still relatively normal and it pours just kind of like you'd expect. Pretty much the same as whole milk and as the fully distilled milk. So there's no real major differences there. But let's talk taste. Now I feel like this one-to-one -one ratio, as mentioned by Ben, definitely has the best of both worlds. You've got that nice level of sweetness, not that intense heavy cream sort of feel to it, but also the coffee tends to shine through a little bit more. So you have that nice balance of sweet to bitter, which to me creates a better experience overall because you have the coffee and the milk both kind of playing well with each other and just creating an overall better experience. So. This is the way I would prefer to do it, but I'd be curious to see if you guys try it and what your thoughts are. Lastly, let's talk final thoughts on freeze distillation. I do think this is worth trying at home. It's super simple, very easy to do. It doesn't require any sort of special equipment, but it does require a lot of time. And also consider that it does require some waste. Remember, you're gonna get about half of the distilled milk out of what you put into it. So you're gonna be throwing away about half of that milk in the process so keep that in mind it's not something that i would recommend doing on a daily basis because of that you don't want to be throwing away milk on a constant basis so that's something to keep in mind if you plan on trying this out at home and one thing worth mentioning also is the food safety aspect of this process so when i made it i was in a time crunch and also for the visual representation of watching it melt I defrosted the milk on the counter. So that's in just normal room temperature and that's not really ideal for milk. As some of you may know, that can definitely cause some bacteria growth and issues that can cause you to get sick. So keep that in mind if you're going to try this. If you're going to serve this milk to anyone else uh, or friends, family, things like that, be sure to do it in the refrigerator. It takes quite a bit longer to defrost if you're gonna do that in the refrigerator, but it's worth it for that peace of mind that you're not gonna make anyone sick. Now, I know it's not that interesting or fashionable to talk about whole milk for an entire 10 minutes, but of course, it's something that seems to be coming back up again. I noticed it popping up in my newsfeed, and this article is obviously from three years ago, so I thought it was worth bringing up and talking about. But obviously, the industry has definitely moved more towards alternatives, especially the rise of oat milk in the last couple of years. So if you have any ideas on how to do videos or some videos you want to see about oat milk, definitely drop those comments down below. And let me know if you've tried this processed milk before, or if you're going to try it over the weekend, definitely remember to swing back by and let me know your thoughts. Also, a big thank you to my February Patreons. Big thanks to Tim, Steven, Claire, Jonathan, Aiden, Nathan, Samantha, Mika, Bound Coffee, Spookus, Noel, Thomas S., Thomas B., Lisa, Robert, Brian, Rowe, Squeegee, Matthew, Christopher, John K., and Ninja Warrior Coffee. Of course, also a big thank you to the Barista and Barback tiers. If you want more information on the Patreon, there's a link to that in the upper right-hand corner right now. And also there is a link to the Patreon in the description, so check that out if you're interested in supporting the channel. Lastly, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that little bell button for notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Spromethius for content throughout the week, the blog at Spromethius.com, and as always, stay caffeinated, pony boy. <laughs>